Do you describe yourself as a feminist nowadays? No. Have you described yourself as a feminist in the past? Yes, for a brief spell. Um, uh, I was a feminist and then it became a real barrier to what I wanted to achieve, ironically, to save women and their rights. And I remember in 2016, when I was still calling myself a feminist, I said to my, I was in the kitchen, I remember it very clearly, and I just said to my husband, wouldn't it be funny, but I think in order to protect women's rights, we're going to have to abandon feminism. I don't even know what he said. He probably wasn't even listening. I just, I just you know, it's really early on in my uh, activities in this side of the debate, in this debate at all. Uh, but I think I knew a long time ago that women aren't feminists. Most women are not feminists. And they won't listen to you if you are, or if you frame your argument with respect to the patriarchy or feminism or oppression. Um, they understand sexism. Like all women understand sexism. We've all experienced sexism. Uh, but when you start talking uh, too often with using the word misogyny, I think you lose so many women. And also women that were feminists kept going, you're not a feminist. You're not feminist enough because you don't do this or you stayed home with your kids or you're a trad wife, whatever that means. I think it includes housework, so I don't quite fit that and I don't really cook. I don't know what I did <laughs> before activism, but um, yeah, I just thought, okay, fine. If you're going to say I'm not a feminist because then I'm just not a feminist and, and it's worked really well for me. And let's face it, who are some of the worst women for pushing this? hideous ideology well they will also call themselves feminists yeah i was going to say so the so if the principle of the party of women is to get women into these decision making rooms um i mean one of the issues to contend with as i'm sure you're well aware is that actually some of the most vociferous opponents of of you and of the party of women are also women like so much of what's going on here is actually a battle within um within womankind they're just wrong. <laughs> so, I look, I've thought about this a lot and it's happened. My whole, women have been the, the worst people I've met my whole life. Um, and that doesn't mean that women do the worst things in, in, you know, out the two sexes. I, I'm pretty sure psychological war warfare is, um, pretty damaging. So, you know, it was, it was girls that were nasty at school like relentlessly, uh, it's often led by envy and jealousy, which apparently if you discuss, then you're a terrible woman, but it's true. Uh, there is there is something about, so well, the feminists, for example, talk about non-hierarchical, a hierarchical kind of organization. That's just a lie as far as I'm concerned, because in any, in any uh, feminist organization, the big fallout is like who's top dog? So it's an, it's an absolute lie. Um, and actually a lot of the women that talk about feminism and, oh, who does she think she is? That's because they want to be top dog. And that's because there is a hierarchy in women's groups. It's just really covert and dishonest. Whereas kind of men, you know, with their peeing contest, you know, everyone can see it. They know it. They all know that they're doing, you know, when Trump walks into a room with Putin or whatever, they, they both know they're, putting their shoulders back a little bit more and doing the harder handshake. It's, it's really up front and center, but women are not. They're, they're covert. So we have to work out what these women gain by um, attacking other women. By, you know, is it, is it that, a bit like the parents who can never admit, they can never admit what they've done to their children. I don't think they ever will, actually. I think that would be far too painful. I think... Uh, that would be more suicide inducing before anybody could ever admit that they've enabled the mutilation of their child. Um, and in fact, I think why some of the parents are such massive advocates for transing more kids is because they just want to cover, they want to protect their own decision. And I think that's the same with some women who hate other women. They don't want to admit 
or they can disguise their position in this world if they can they can crush other women or they can pretend that that these men in dresses are more vulnerable it's i can't i'm not a psychologist so i can't accurately pinpoint what it is but i can i can feel it you know young women for example um i often say they hate us but they will become us you know say to them when i'm when they're screaming at me i'm like you hate us but you will become us <laughs> like you will have wrinkles you won't be as um sexually uh, alluring to men um these things will happen when when you speak and your value is somewhat diminished that will that will also happen to you um and also i'm very confident and that that that's not a great thing to be uh as a woman like other women don't like it uh men who do it are really cool and oh my gosh he's got such bravado women who do it are boastful and conceited and uh show offs when you were younger and before you'd had your own kids if 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 trans activism had come along do you think you might have been more persuaded by it or do you think you were always sort of um confident enough in your own mind that you wouldn't have been taken in by it i'm really in in touch with what it means to be female i i started my periods at 10 years old i had to wear a bra from the age of like 8 or 9 and i was skinny it wasn't like you know i was chubby and uh so and i was sexually harassed from the age of like 9 or 10 so i've always been really clear what it means to be a woman and i th- i think once anybody understands that most of these men are just transvestites who just get sexually aroused i don't think they would be convinced but i'm also very very happy to be the only person in a room with an opinion opposing everybody else like i probably quite enjoy it um i really like you don't get that heart in your mouth feeling when you in in confrontation you don't do you feel do you feel like physically stressed when you're in confrontation no no i rarely walk away from a situation saying i wish i'd said x y z occasionally <laughs> i do that every time <laughs> But no, I really, I find conflict really exciting. Like not, not being in the middle of a mob conflict, but you know, if, if I was talking to you and you were pro-life or even if you were pro-choice, right? And I'm pro-choice. So I don't know what you are, but whatever side you were on, I could very, very well argue and enjoy giving you the opposing view to find out exactly what what kind of millimeter of difference there is between those two positions because it is it's just one tiny little something somewhere that makes the difference between one side or the other side of any given thing um and so no i i really enjoy it i'm i think i'm sure you probably do which is why you do it no why you have these conversations so just going back to this term um feminism and your reluctance to use it. I mean, I get asked this question quite often. Um do you describe yourself as a feminist given that I'm often very critical of a lot of um ideas within feminism. And I say yes because I think that there's a outside of the sort of activist definition of it. I think there's a broader definition which is to do with just defending the interest defending the interests of women and girls. And w- you know, when 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 you list all of the things that you feel so passionately about, you know, defending women's spaces, um, sexual harassment, sexual violence, you know, you mentioned the fact that all women sort of will, will have experienced sexism or will know what sexism is. The vast majority of people would hear that and they say, well, that's feminism. You know, that's what that describes. But you're, you're still, you, you still disavow the label. Well, because I think, you know, if somebody hears, well, that's a feminist goal, then I'm happy for them to hear that. And it, you know, it probably does align with that. But I just don't want what I do to have the boundaries of any ideology, even if it's one that would totally encapsulate what I do. Um, because there are a lot of women that will just hear, she's a feminist, and that's it. That's no more. And some of those women may have really bizarre ideas about what feminism is um 
you know, do I want, I want Muslim women, um, Jewish women, I want old women, young women, women on the right who are consistently told that they have less value um, and they're not welcome. You know, like loads of the leading feminists in this, in the UK will, well, I don't know whether they're leading, actually, they might think they're leading, but, you know, women I'm sure you've interviewed on your podcast will talk about, um, oh, well, you know, everyone's welcome. Well, not them. You know, we don't want to hear their voices. And I sort of think uh, we recently did um, Belfast. And apparently, now, I don't know this to be true about this woman. She seemed very nice on the day. Um, and let's just pretend it, it's not who they were talking about. Let's pretend somebody did turn up who was genuinely part of some sort of what is called far right. Now, what that what far right might mean these days is is up for debate because I think it's literally wanting the genocide, <laughs> the genocide of people on the basis of their race. That's what I kind of think far right white supremacy means. Um, but anyway, let's say this woman's born into a particular sort of family and they do have some pretty discriminatory, um, prejudicial views, uh, totally unfounded, um, pretty abhorrent. Most of us would, would think they were terrible. How's that woman ever going to leave that? If that's what she's surrounded by, why wouldn't I want to welcome her into let women speak, um, and give her a voice and let her feel pride and wonderful about being a, a woman and being amongst women that maybe she would not like to stand with. Like I just, it's just so powerful to watch that. And I think that way of pulling somebody out or pulling someone in out of the cold from some views that I'm sure we would all find unpalatable is a much better way than saying, well, oh, let's not you know, she's not welcome. Like, and that's, for me, that's, that's what feminism does. It, it tells some women that they aren't welcome. And there's lots of polling, of course, showing that, um, as I'm, I'm sure you know, that most women don't identify as feminists and, and don't like the label. Um, do you think there's a class difference as well? Do you think that middle-class women are more open to the feminist label than our working-class women? Yeah, because I think it's an easy thing to say and it's a very difficult thing to do. Mm. And, um, I think a lot of women who call themselves feminists, I mean, I, d I don't know what it is about them that they, you know, there's, there's feminists that criticize the way I look, like publicly will say horrible things about the way I look, uh, or just, they're so vicious. I mean, I would say the most, and this is a terribly gendered term and I accept it is and I think it is for a reason and that's the, the the most bitchy women I know actually call themselves feminists and they have large platforms and they're like just relentlessly personal mm. 